IFP pay policy. This is a referral from the Policy Resources Committee held on the 16th of March 2022, and I now call on Councillor Jeanette Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call upon Councillor Yvonne Nolan to second them. <laughs> so moved, Mr Mayor. So seconded, Mr Mayor. Councillor Williamson, do you wish to speak to this item? If so, uh, you now have five minutes. Mr Mayor, I didn't intend to speak. Uh, no, actually, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I am not aware of any amendments. So I propose we move to the debate. Uh, are there any speakers? No? Oh, lovely. Uh, which one? Sorry, thank you. Um, second, down to Yvonne. Councillor Nolan, do you wish to speak to this item? If so, uh, you don't have three minutes. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know. Proposal of the motion, Councillor Williamson, do you wish to exercise your right of reply? If so, you have up to three minutes. Uh, no, thank you. Well, there being no comments, we will now move to the vote. Mr. All those Mr. in favour? Mr. Mayor, just, just, just to assist the clerks, just to inform you that my columns has gone home being ill. Oh, so, sorry. So, um, when they're counting, they didn't want to think they were going haywire. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> okay. You okay with that? All those in favour? Against? And abstentions? Thank you. On this one. 5C. 5C, appointment of independent persons to uh, constituents and Standards Committee. This is a referral from the Constitution and Standards Committee held on the 17th of February 2022. And I call upon Councillor Phil Gilchrist to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call upon Councillor Paul Stewart to second. So moved, Mr Mayor. Seconded, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gilchrist, do you wish to speak to this item? If so, you are up to five minutes. No, not to speak, Mr Mayor, merely to point out that uh, we value the contribution the four independent members listed here will make to our work and commend that to the Council. Thank you. I am not aware of any amendments, so I will move to the debate. Are there any speakers? No. Nope. You are up to three minutes to address the council. All right, done that. Seconded. Second of the motion, Councillor Stewart. Do you wish to speak to this item? Uh, if so, you have now three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't wish to speak to the item. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favour? Right. Right. Sorry. Uh, Councillor Gilchrist, do you want to exercise your right of reply? No, Mr. Mayor, uh, we are quite content with the, the procedure. He does it. <laughs> okay. There being no further comments, we will now move to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Abstentions? Unanimous. Next one is item six, report and recommendations from council committees for consideration. A, decision is taken since the last council meeting. Um, again, 45 minutes time limit. I hope we can beat that. No question will exceed one minute and no answer will exceed two minutes. Members are asked to receive the minutes of the committee meetings listed on the summons and this is now also an opportunity to ask questions of committee chairs. Members' attention is drawn to an urgent officer decision which has been taken and is reported to the Council in accordance with Part 4, Section 4, Paragraph 9 of the Constitution. 
This decision was published on the 10th of March 2022, having been taken by the Director of Resources in respect of casualty, liability and professional indemnity insurances contract award. <coughs> decision notice and report attached at pages 71 to 77. The decision being urgent due to the new contract arrangements being required for the 1st of April 2022 implementation. Now, I am not aware of any questions being asked in advance of the meeting and I do not intend to read through each meeting individually, but will, you, but will instead refer to this item end block. I would therefore ask members that if they do have any questions, they make reference to the committee and the minute number that their question relates to. Do members have any questions? Councillor Bird. Thank you very much. This is a question in regards to the last pension fund committee meeting, uh, which considered the credible allegations of human rights abuses by companies operating in occupied territories in violation of international law. Some councillors disagreed with additional due diligence checks on some companies. Um, they were opposed to the prospect of any divestment and, and assisted that engagement was best. But some councillors agreed with many pension fund members that in support of fair and equal treatment of companies involved in occupation of territories around the world, recognised by the UK government that way. And then the very next day, Russia invaded Ukraine and many local government pension schemes have frozen further investment in companies engaged in the occupation of Crimea the war on Ukraine and to the Russian state. Some um, local government pension schemes have gone further, like in Wales, and they've skipped over all kinds of engagement and are, and are direct divesting from such companies as soon as possible. So my questions are, is how, how is Merseyside Pension Fund responding to the issue of investments directly linked to the Russian state? And are there parallels with the illegal invasion of Ukraine and other areas subject to military occupation like the occupied Palestinian Pat Cleary, would you like to answer that, Pat, please? If you can. Yep. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to Councillor Bird for advance notice of the question. So, in relation to your first question, uh, Merseyside Pension Fund is actively working to address its exposure to investments linked to Russia and to fully comply with UK sanctions. Divestment is actively under consideration. However, the Russian stock market has been closed and additionally, foreign investors have been banned from selling by the Russian authorities. So that this is just one of several complicating factors. Uh, others are the implications of sanctions are also something that we need to understand as they preclude most financial tra transactions with Russian entities. A further strategic consideration is who would be the buyers of our divestment with asset values severely depressed by many sellers and sanctions, we could be gifting assets to unfriendly counterparts and indirectly enriching, enriching them. So morally, the view of the fund, which I support, is that divestment is the right thing to do, but the timing of our actions needs due consideration. So the fund is liaising closely with the National Local Government Pension Scheme Advisory Board, the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association, as well as other local government uh, pension funds to coordinate our responses as effectively as possible. Merseyside Pension Fund has less than 0.25% of its value in Russian assets, so the direct impact of selling holdings would not be material. And on your second point, uh, the situation in Ukraine is still evolving and it is possibly premature to be definitive, but doubtless Merseyside Pension Fund's responsible investment policy would apply to the situation in Ukraine as it does in other occupied territories and conflict zones. The actual response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine does practically reinforce the need to take ethical considerations into account in our investment decisions as detailed in our investment strategy statement, which details our approach to responsible investment. Thank you, Mayor. Got over the page is 6B, 
joint arrangements and external organisations. No reports or questions have been received in advance of the meeting. Therefore, <clears throat> that concludes this evening's meeting. And can I just, before I do say, yeah, before I do say, um, that's the end of the meeting. Just to say a big thank you to everyone in the room here uh, who have been absolutely brilliant with me, the Mayor, and it's made life so much easier when, when you, you do it, and it, it's, it's fantastic. So I've had a great year, but I say I will illuminate when we go to Jeff's inauguration. Um, but thank you so much indeed, every single one of you. Thank you. So we'll wait for that meeting, but I just want to thank you on behalf of everyone in the chamber, uh, Mr. Mayor, George, for the way you've handled um, council meetings. Not been easy, certainly. Um, I think you've handled them really well, and been really good natured and patient. So just a big thank you, and as you've just said, I'll also expand on what I've got to say. <laughs>